What has Athens to do with Jerusalem? Tertullian's infamous quote still rings in the ears of many Christians today. What Tertullian's essentially getting at is that philosophy and theology have nothing to do with each other, that philosophy has no place in the church and no place in Christian thought. Some Christians still display a sort of fear or at least an apathy toward philosophy. We don't understand the need for it, and some will go so far as to say that we should avoid it because it's secular. We don't understand how integral philosophy is to our theology. Philosophical theology might rightly be defined as the movement from the secular to the spiritual. And I suppose that this is why many Christians are afraid of it, why we stray from it, uh, is because we want to avoid those things outside of Scripture. We cling to this sort of casual or nonchalant biblicism that greatly affects the way we think. Augustine was against this notion. Augustine believed that all truth was God's truth. And Augustine wasn't the only person that thought this way. We might take, for example, Justin Martyr, the Platonist turned Christian who, even after converting to Christianity, continued to wear his philosopher's robes, which was a matter of great controversy in the church contemporary to him. Now, Justin Martyr, in his apologies, sought to explain the reasonableness or the logic to Christianity. One of the things that he sought to explain was the nature of Jesus Christ as the God-man. And Justin Martyr used this Platonist term to explain who Christ was, and that term was logos. And Justin Martyr wasn't the first person to use logos in this way. The first was the Apostle John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the Apostle John is essentially using this term, the term logos, to make his writing more accessible to the Greek readers, to make his point more palatable, more readily understood, because they would already have this notion of what the logos was. Now, the Apostle John isn't the first person to take this kind of action. We can go all the way back to the book of Genesis. And if you look at Genesis, you can see similarities to texts like the Enuma Elish or the Epic of Gilgamesh. And you can see the similarities in narrative and even moral sometimes. You can see the writer picking up on strands of these things and recycling them, right? Now, all this to say, um, what you really see when you look at the greater whole of Christian thought is God appropriating these secular concepts and using them to suit his purposes. What you see is God himself kind of fostering in this concept of moving from the secular to the spiritual and taking these things that are secular and saying, this is mine now. This is what this means. This is why this, signif this is significant. This is not to say that Christianity is merely the bastard child of the best of Mesopotamian and Greek pagan thought. It's more than that. It has to be. But what all of this really amounts to is that Athens has everything to do with Jerusalem.